His prolific career spans across six decades, involves many genres, and in recent years, his opinions have somehow enraged the safe haven that is Twitter. Studied by peers and scholars, I'm sure what you're eagerly anticipating is for a guy who likes superhero movies to discuss the latest Scorsese film, so I got you covered. My name is Ren, and this is my review of Killers of the Flower Moon. Welcome back, Film Festival fans. Thank you for dropping by on day four of the London Film Festival, the big day, hottest ticket day. Martin Scorsese is back with his first film of the decade as he takes us back to when oil was first discovered in 1920s Oklahoma under Osage Nation land. And we see members of the Osage tribe murdered one by one under mysterious circumstances, sparking a major FBI investigation to unravel the mystery involving J. Edgar Hoover in a sprawling three and a half hour long American epic that illustrates Martin Scorsese's mastery at the craft. He has nothing to prove at this point in his career, so it feels endlessly refreshing to see a man so far along in his years and in his career carry such passion. Passion that you see in every frame throughout this film. The way he captures the landscape and the time and the culture of the Osage people. It is an owed to them a ratification for the sins committed against them he lays it all on the line as the film begins and carries this unapologetically bleak drama as it follows the lives and the darkest sides of humanity that were involved with these occurrings it is based on a book and the book is based on on the real events that were for many years swooping under the rug. Earlier this year with Oppenheimer and now with Killers of the Flower Moon, that's two movies in 2023 from auteur filmmakers in cinemas that are blockbuster budgeted over three hours and are adult dark dramas showcasing the variety of stories we have access to. And much like Oppenheimer and Christopher Nolan, Martin Scorsese is unafraid to follow morally gray protagonists. He brings us into a story where there are no clear answers, no clear resolutions, and he doesn't necessarily offer a happy ending. He keeps things bleak, grounded, and at points, terrifying. There's a constant heaviness present all through the film in every moment, every character conversation that only grows as the story in Killers of the Flower Moon unfolds. Even in the most wonderful, peaceful moments, even in the most amusing interactions, there's a sense of inescapability to the darkness that seeps through the Osage County as we witness what is really at work in here and how power and control absolutely consume all those who covet it. The perspective Martin Scorsese uses to tell this story is the discovery of oil, is the becoming of America, and he does not shy away from capturing how it all started. He is not afraid to display the worst of humanity and have us follow the worst of humanity as our protagonists. Leonardo DiCaprio is sensational once again. He is Leonardo DiCaprio and he plays an extremely sad character. One that 100% of the film sports the face of Grumpy Cat and that's why he became unrecognizable. He begins his film as a humble, unassuming man searching for work post-war as he arrives at the Osage Nation only for the presence of capitalism to slowly but surely corrupt him with every single decision and every single temptation. Capitalism that is incorporated by Robert De Niro. This is one creepy, seedy Machiavellian man who pulls the strings on everything. He has his eyes on everyone, he has his ears all around and his assuming, his controlling demeanor to 
everyone that interacts with him sends chills down your spine. This is one of his greatest performances. It's pure villainy, but it's never over the top. It's never mustache twirly. It always feels real. And it's a perfect contrast to Lily Gladstone's heartfelt portrayal of a woman trapped within a system she never wanted to be a part of. The Osage Nation never asked to be a part of. Their land, their resources were taken away from them by greed, by control, by obsession with power. And what was once humble in Leonardo DiCaprio, despite the ever presence of his wife, which is a genuinely loving relationship, soon enough gets corrupted and twisted and secrets create lies and anger turns into hate. It, it all leads to the dark side is my point and it all just flows so well. This triangle of characters represents all the moral nuances that you find in humanity. Martin Scorsese just pulls the best performances out of every single one of his cast members and makes the landscape a character in it of itself. There's a real tragedy given the ever-presence of Robert De Niro as the master of puppets, proverbially, in this film, and how he just maneuvers his way under the shadows. It gets under your skin. It is terrifying to see him at work as a man who is in constant control. When it comes to the technical aspects of Killers of the Flower Moon, this is a Martin Scorsese $200 million production. It looks incredible. Every shot captures the natural beauty and the harrowing events that corrupt this nation, that take it away from its own people. It's bleak and it's unsettling, but there's a beauty to it in its most natural form. This is the same cinematographer that did Barbie earlier this year, so, you know, that's range. The score as well just manages to capture each moment and convey the tone beautifully, allowing to excel what is already on screen without really telling you how to feel in certain moments. And this goes for a variety of emotions all throughout as we witness key character beats, decisions made that take the story in certain directions. It's all so well put together. And I cannot say that any of these qualities surprised me at all, which is honestly my biggest issue with this film. We're talking about Martin Scorsese. The bar when it comes to being good for his films is very high. But I do have troubles with this film. One of its biggest pitfalls is that there is no mystery to engage us in this story. The very first conversation between Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro in the second scene in this film just lays it all out a little bit too on the nose. It makes everything obvious. And there are moments in this story that would have been so excelled if there was a shroud of mystery around what is actually going on. I know this is based on a book, this is based on real events. I did not know of the real events. I have not read the book, so there were adjustments to how the story is told and how everything is revealed that could have made it more engaging if there was an actual mystery to it all, which I just didn't feel there was. Everything where the story was going to go felt just a little bit too obvious. And it feels weird for me to have these issues with Killers of the Flower Moon. It sounds like it's bringing the film down to common levels, but it's not. The standard of Scorsese's filmography is just so high that all these elements really stand out and could have helped trim the edges of the film, help just tighten up its momentum and story progression and heighten those big moments in the film from character beat to character beat. And like I said, Killers of the Flower Moon is three hours and 30 minutes. These days, there's a ton of discussion online about how long movies should be. 
There's no answer. Every movie, every director should cut their film to be as long as they envision it to be in the way they want to tell their story. And I'm happy Martin Scorsese got his three hours and 30 minutes. The film maintains a scrutinous pace throughout. It's not really a slow movie, though you could argue it's slow because it has so much time to tell this story. But one hour could easily have been shaven off this film without really taking away from Scorsese's intent. The same thing was true in Irishman, and I feel this is a slightly better film than Irishman, where the story just speaks to so many levels, both on an epic scale, it tells the sprawling story that is true and is harrowing and is a cautionary tale about power and greed, but it also speaks to Martin Scorsese's preoccupations and burdens as a storyteller living in this day and age of blockbusters taking over. Look, to those who know me, it's no surprise. I love superhero movies. I love blockbusters, but I also love movies in general. Every year, I watch every and any kind of film, from blockbusters to auteur pieces to Oscar darlings to independent films. I love that we have such variety and we have quality on every level of these films. And we also have bad films in all these genres and subgenres. So to me, the problem isn't and will never be the kind and amount of films that we have access to on the big screen and on the small screen, but rather what the audiences choose to see. They should embrace more variety. They should celebrate that they have so many options and not just choose the one thing. But with all that said, and without getting into spoilers, Killers of the Flower Moon has one powerful ending that recontextualizes the whole piece, adding one more layer to Scorsese's appeal for grand stories to be seen by audiences and not restraint ourselves to the cinema we choose to witness. This is the kind of story that without Scorsese behind it would have been a Netflix series or would probably have been a podcast or in the olden days, a radio show. There's a power to having this grandest story told by one of our greatest living filmmakers in the grandest screen possible. It's not my favorite Scorsese, it's not my favorite of the year, but let's face it, Scorsese at just not his best still sees this work at a level that comfortably solidifies his place as one of our greatest filmmakers ever. So with that out of the way, and before I dive into my final thoughts on Killers of the Flower Moon, it's time for you to start the conversation in the comments below. Are you excited for the film? Have you read the book? Did you know about the real life events? And let me know your top five Martin Scorsese films. Anything and everything down there. And if you're enjoying this review, want to check out more from the London Film Festival, there's a playlist right up here which you should keep your eye on. Or if you just want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be. Consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. Pillars of the Flower Moon undeniably sees Scorsese as a master craftsman, but just didn't quite leave me enamored. Finely tuned work all around, from DiCaprio, Gladstone, and De Niro at his seediest, in a thematically heavy contemplative thriller on greed, obsession, power, and an eerily absorbing atmosphere. I'm giving Killers of the Flower Moon a B+. Thank you so much for watching. Start the Scorsese conversation in the comments below. What superhero movie should Scorsese direct? <laughs> Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. I'll be back very soon with more reviews from the London Film Festival. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.